Good morning viewers today i am present before you with the famous novel of charles dickens entitled great expectations in today's podcast i will be talking about how great expectations portrays vividly a society riddled with injustice greed and cruelty Before I begin the podcast it is advisable that you keep a notebook and a pen so that you can jot down the important points relating to this particular topic it is further advisable that use earplugs for listening the podcast so here i begin the picture of society depicted in great expectations is by no means gratifying or pleasant or agreeable Dickens was a censor of his age and his novels expose many of the evils and abuses that were rampant in Victorian society. Dickens's view of Victorian society as embodied in the novel Great Expectations must have been highly unflattering to his contemporaries. We see here a society riddled by cruelty, greed and injustice. An attitude of cruelty is obvious in the manner in which Pip as a child is treated by those with the exception of Joe and Biddy with whom he comes into contact Pip's own sister Miss Gregory who has brought him up by hand is a very hard-hearted woman who treats Pip most roughly completely disregarding the effect of her ill treatment on an impressionable mind mrs gargery is constantly scolding pip coming down heavily on him for minor lapses or for no lapses at all she constantly reminds pip of the great sacrifices which she has made in order to bring him up and rear him she takes pleasure in cataloging in his presence the illnesses through which she has tended him and the ordeals which she believes herself to have gone through in the performance of her duties as pip's foster mother she has been making a frequent use of tickler the name which she has given to the cane with which she often chastises pip mrs gargery's treatment of her husband joe is equally inconsiderate and callous Jo feels utterly helpless in the face of the ill temper of his wife and has reconciled himself to her shrewish behavior. He tells Pip that this woman is given to government that she treats both of them as if she were a mogul that when she is on the rampage which is very often she is a buster. Pip tells us that he was treated by his sister as if I had insisted on being born in opposition to the dictates of reason, religion and morality and against the dissuading arguments of my best friends. Pip says that even when he was taken to have a new suit of clothes, the tailor had orders to make them like a kind of reformatory and on no account to let him have the free use of his limbs. and it is not only mrs gargery who treats pip thus pumblejook wopsel and the hubbles aid and abet her in this ill treatment of the growing boy pip develops a strong hatred for all these persons because they all ride a rough shot over his feelings pumblejook is const- constantly urging pip never to forget the favor that mrs gargery has done to him by bringing him up pip recalls his sister's ill treatment of him with much distress his sister's upbringing had he says made him very sensitive and he points out that in the little world in which children have their existence there is nothing so finely perceived and so finely felt as in injustice within himself says pip he had experienced from his babyhood a perpetual conflict with injustices he had known that his sister in her capricious and violent coercion was unjust to him 
It is the great cruelty and injustice that Pip suffers early in his life that he becomes in his own words morally timid and very sensitive. Nor is Pip as a boy treated any better by Miss Havisham and Estella. Estella is frankly haughty towards Pip. She calls him coarse and common. She is contemptuous of his manners. She is proud and insulting in her treatment of him. When she gives him something to eat and drink on the occasion of his first visit, she behaves and insolently as if he were a dog in disgrace. And Pip tells us that he was humiliated, hurt, spurned, offended. On the occasion of his second visit, she gives him a slap, calling him a little coarse monster. Nor does Pip receive much kindness from Miss Havisham, who repeatedly asks Estella to beggar him and instigates her to exercise all her charms upon the boy in order to bewitch him. Break their hearts, break their hearts and have no mercy, says Miss Havisham to Estella, and Estella really grows into a merciless breaker of hearts, feeling absolutely no affection and love for anyone not even for Miss Havisham. Even Mr. Jagger speaks to Pip. When Pip first happens to meet him at Miss Havisham's house in an admonitory tone, making a most emphatic use of his forefinger. The manner in which Miss Havisham brings up Estella is another striking example of the cruelty that human beings are capable of. Miss Havisham has herself been treated cruelly and unjustly by her lover who deserted her at the last moment after robbing her of a considerable amount of money. Miss Havisham has become an embittered woman carrying a deep sense of wrong. She hardens Estella's heart and makes it impossible for Estella to respond to others. She brings up Estella in the candlelit darkness and decay of Satis house and destroys Estella's capacity to live in the daylight of natural affections. Estella knows that as Drummel's wife, she will be no blessing to her husband, and this is what she tells Pip in advance because she is fully aware of Miss Havisham's success in having stolen her heart away and having put eyes in its place. Other cases of cruelty which reinforce the picture presented above are the attitude of Miss Havisham's half-brother Arthur towards her and his machinations against her. Molly's committing a murder out of her jealousy of the other woman, Orlick's murderous assault on Mrs. Gargery and his attempt to kill Pip, the merciless beatings which Joe's father used to give to Joe's mother in a state of drunkenness, nor can we ignore the callousness which Pip himself shows towards his best friends and well-wishers, Joe and Biddy, in his days of prosperity. As for the theme of greed in this novel, we find here a society that is dominated by money values. As a critic points out, this novel contains many examples of the humanly destructive effects of money. The major theme of this novel is that of money as the key to gentility. In the words of another critic, this novel is a statement of what money can do, good and bad, of how it can change and make distinctions of classes, how it can pervert virtue. Most of the characters in the novel show a hankering after money. On the occasion of his second visit to Miss Havisham's house, Pip sees a number of her relatives, whom he rightly describes as toadies and humbugs. These relatives are jealous of Pip. And yet, in his days of prosperity, they fawn upon him with the basest meanness. Herbert himself, an excellent man, though he is, is not totally free from greed. Early in the story, we see Herbert prowling about Miss Havisham's house in the hope that the rich old woman might favour him with her patronage. Otherwise, too, Herbert keeps speaking of his big plans to make money and accumulate capital, thus reflecting the general Victorian domination of money over the minds of people. Jaggers, a skillful and able lawyer, shows not a trace of feeling in his heart he would not proceed with a caste till he has made sure 
that the full amount of his fee has been deposited with his clerk. Pumblechook becomes utterly and abjectly servile towards Pip when Pip is in prosperous circumstances and lapses into his old domineering ways when Pip's prosperity ends. But it is Pip's own career which shows in a most striking manner the lure of money and its corrupting influence. It is not only that Pip becomes snobbish and callous in his treatment of Joe and Biddy on becoming rich, but his very passion for Estella originates in the importance that money has in his eyes. As a critic, Graham Smith points out in this novel, Dickens merges the motive of money and gentility with the passion of love. True that Pip loves Estella for her beauty, but he loves her also because he sees her as the exquisite representative of a higher kind of life. The more one feels one's way into the heart of the book, says this critic, the more important becomes the connection between Pip's love for Estella and his love for the externals of wealth and position. A similar snobbery is seen in Pip's reaction to Magwitch. Not only to Magwitch's heavy and clumsy grubbing, but his reaction to the discovery that his benefactor is a convict. It is on this occasion more than ever before that Pip realizes what a wrong he committed in deserting Joe. This means that he would not have regretted his desertion of Joe if his benefactor had turned out to be not a social outcast but a socially respectable person like Miss Havisham. There is a lot of injustice too depicted in this novel. Not only the injustice which individual human beings do towards one another under the influences exerted by money values and otherwise, but also the injustice done by society collectively towards different individuals. The manner in which the constables investigate the murderous assault on Mrs. Gargery is described by Dickens in a satirical manner. The description of conditions in English prisons during the Victorian age reveals the injustice of society as a whole to human beings. When Pip has paid a visit to Newgate Prison, he carries a sense of shame on him and he tells us, I quote, I beat the prison dust off my feet as I sauntered to and fro and I shook it out of my dress and I exhaled its air from my lungs, unquote. At that time, we are told jails were much neglected and the period of reaction against public wrongdoing was still far off. The treatment meted out to prisoners was most callous. The same criticism of the kind of legal justice that prevailed in the Victorian age is to be found in the manner in which a description is given of convicts being sentenced at the sessions. Pip gives us a shocking account of the manner in which 32 men and women were sentenced to death, some defined, some stricken with terror, some sobbing, weeping, some covering their faces, some staring gloomily about. The picture of the judge reading out his judgment against Magwitch is quite depressing. In fact, at this stage, we begin to sympathize with Magwitch deeply in spite of the fact that he has a criminal past. In short, the overall impression that we have of Magwitch is that of a man more sinned against than sinning. In this context, Jagger's account of the dangers to which children were exposed also fills us with a sense of outrage against society. Jagger's saved Molly's child to protect it from those dangers which he describes to Pip. As a critic, Elizabeth Drew in her book The Novel tells us each of the chief characters in this novel seeks an identity of the self within a society which is riddled with injustice, greed and cruelty. Each of the chief characters is in isolation yet entangled with others in a common guilt. Each is forced to face the mystery of evil, passion and pain. Reconciliation and forgiveness come from the discovery of the basic element in human relationship and understanding. That true identity and escape from isolation are reached in humility and compassion. 
It is symbolized in Pip's feelings towards Magwitch after his capture towards the end of the novel, wherein it is written, I quote, For now my repugnance to him had all melted away, unquote. So this was all about how Charles Dickens has very realistically and honestly presented before us the picture of Victorian society. This society which was riddled with injustice, greed and cruelty. But still the characters were trying to establish their respective identities. Please leave your questions and observations in the comment section below after listening to this podcast. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get the latest updates. Thank you for your valuable time. Here's wishing you a great day ahead.